So I'm here with Lex. He's been a viewer following along for a while. He has one of the best self-built camper vans that I've ever seen. So we're gonna take a look at it. Before continuing on, I want to give a special thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. There's a link in the description below, and if you follow that link, you can get two free months of a subscription to Skillshare, and then after that, it's only about $10 a month. Would definitely recommend checking them out, guys, but I'm going to talk a little bit more about them later in this video. I also want to give a special thank you to those of you that have purchased 2020 Element Van Life calendars. I do still have a few available, not too many, and I'm, I'm not planning to do a second batch of them. So if you are interested in picking one up, there's also a link in the description to my website elementvanlife.com slash shop let's get back to the tour okay let's start with the layout the wife and i are old and so we have to get up in the middle of the night several times we didn't want to crawl over each other so hence bunk beds and that way we can get up and down uh, as needed in the middle of the night without disturbing each other also, I have the short van. I wanted this to be able to fit in any parking space. So this is 17 feet, nine inches, bumper to bumper. And so it will go into any parking space anywhere, but it didn't leave me enough room for a dinette. So instead we used swivel seats. With the swivel seats, we use the leg and table, which is uh, used for sailboats and that kind of stuff. Very popular in the marine world. And so that becomes our workspace and eating space and all that kind of stuff. The toilet comes out in the middle of the night and we started out with a Thetford Flushomatic. The problem with those is that they have water in them and they tell you that you can conveniently take those and dump them in any toilet. And I found that my local McDonald's was not amused when I went in with my Thetford cassette and wanted to dump it in their toilets. So we found that it was much better to just have a bucket with a plastic bag. Uh, we use a regular toilet seat, which is much more comfortable. And then we use a tight fitting lid so that when we've done our business, we can go ahead and put the lid on, we're done. And this comes out at night and sits out all night long. And then we have the toilet accessories right under here. All right, so now to the bunk beds. Um, we designed the bunk beds so that uh, they not only act as uh, sleeping accommodations, but it's also, this is also my pickup truck and I need to be able to carry stuff. So there's latches here that come apart and that allows this to swing up and lock out of the way. So that makes this very convenient. It's also set up, I don't have a mattress in the top, so this is gonna drop down, but it's also set up so that this will drop down and create the back uh, to the sofa if we wanna do that. All right, when we're cooking, about 90% of our cooking is done here uh, with the Cuisinart Griddler. And we really like the Griddler. One of the things that it has going for it that a George Foreman grill doesn't have is that each of the upper and lower plates can be set at different temperatures. We use a unique method of cooking where everything is done in plastic bags. We set this for the same temperature as boiling water. And if we want an omelet in the morning, we have an omelet. We just set the omelet in the Griddler, set the temperature for 200 to 225 degrees, close the lid, turn it on, and in about 15 minutes, we have a perfect omelet. No mess, no fuss, nothing to clean. To be able to do what we do, we package our food uh, specifically in vacuum, uh, vacuum packing machines. And so in, in our refrigerator, right now, if you look inside this, this is a freezer, and this is carrying probably 45 steaks. Everything we do, it's all frozen, it's all vacuum packed, so we're just ready to go when we go, and it is extremely efficient. I can carry enough food in this if I needed to for two people for two months. This 
is the uh, galley, small galley area here. Uh, we have a swing up here, so it can be a cutting board. I also have an induction hot plate here that pulls out, and I can set it either up here or I can set it here. Then I also have a deep square sink with a square bottom. And there's a reason for that. We don't actually use the sink much. Maybe we'll brush our teeth in it. But it was actually bought so that we could cook sous vide in here. So what we have is this uh, thermal container, which is really just a big thermos. And we fill this with water. And this actually becomes the container for this so that when we're driving, water doesn't splash out. And then we have the sous vide immersion heater that drops in here and this keeps a precise temperature so that we can cook steaks exactly medium rare while we're driving they'll hold for hours and when we get out we can then just take it and sear it and it's done and they're done perfectly now what I have is a foot switch that happens to be right under the edge of the galley and so I can turn this on and nothing happens until I hit the foot switch and when I hit the foot switch I have water. Most people use uh, a gray tank for the drain of the water and uh, originally that's what I had done so I got two jerry cans one of each of two different colors so that one could be the gray tank one could be the fresh water tank. The problem with that is that gray tanks stink. They really start to smell and you end up having to clean them out and bleach them and it's a real mess. So what happened here is the water comes out, it comes down and it drains out here. You can see the puddle that we made through this little pipe that comes through an actual hole in the rocker panel. So this is an actual weep hole in the rocker panel. There are no extra holes drilled in, in this to make this happen. So it's just coming through an existing hole. Normally, if you're parking along the side, this just goes down in the curb, it's gray water, it's no big deal. If you are someplace else where you can't do that, you just put a bucket or a gallon jug underneath it, it just fits right in there, fill it up, and then you can empty it when you need to. On the, on the roof, we have 800 watts of solar, and that goes through a Morningstar MPPT60 charge controller. That is the primary charging system for my batteries. However, there is a backup system down here. This is a Sterling battery to battery charger that takes power off of the engine's alternator and it converts it to what the lithium batteries want to see. The basic here is 540 ampere hours of lithium batteries. These are not the batteries that come prepackaged with battery management systems and all that kind of stuff like Battleborn. You pay a massive premium for things like that. So I'm getting more than five times the power um, because I did the, the work myself. I have 800 watts of solar on the roof. I can switch and run the inverter, which is a 1500 watt inverter, which just happens to match the griddler and the various other appliances that we use. We don't have anything that runs more than 1500 watts. I used uh, something called perfection flooring. It is vinyl tiles, but instead of having a glue on the back of them, these are put together like a puzzle. So the bottoms of these have tabs and grooves for uh, snapping together. This allows you to pull the, one of these out and put and replace it if it gets damaged. Subfloor is half inch ply setting on top of a commercial bed rug. The bed rug is a dense foam. I decided to go with that. Most people fill in the gaps of the skid plates with uh, like quarter inch plywood and they'll glue that down or they'll screw it in. Um, I didn't want to damage the floor in any way. The bed rug comes and it's about a half inch thick and it's already laser cut to fit all the peaks and valleys in the floor. And so that just lays right on there. And the other thing is it it's very convenient. It allowed me to take it out, lay it on top of plywood and mark out my floor with, so it created the template for me. I didn't have to do it. 
The van is like triple insulated. There are two layers of thinsulate uh, separated by a layer of low E and my panels are put on the doors with magnets because I didn't want to put holes in the doors. In most kitchens, um, bathrooms and that kind of stuff, you have what are called toe kicks. So that you're, you can put your toes in while you're standing up against something. I wanted toe kicks because the aisles are so gawk-on narrow and I needed some place to put my feet. The problem with that is I now lose three inches in height. I've wasted that space. Didn't want to waste that space. If you look at my feet, you'll see that the toe kick has been used and is now a drawer. So all the toe kicks have been turned into drawers. Another unique feature is the way these cabinets are built. The cabinets are built with cross dowels. A cross dowel is a small little uh, barrel shaped piece of metal that has been threaded uh, crosswise. And you can see an example of a cross dowel right here. This makes an incredibly strong connection. It, you, would, you would destroy the plywood trying to get it out before you would destroy this joint. But what's so cool about it is that in 30 seconds I can take this whole thing apart. It also allows you to use lighter, you know, half inch right. plywood, right? So right. it saves on weight. Everything is, yeah, it's all half inch plywood. Very lightweight. Very lightweight. The furnace is a diesel furnace. It's an SPAR D2 Airtronic. Why did I get a diesel one? Well, because my original van was diesel, but I had so much trouble with it, I turned it back in, Chrysler bought it back, I got a gas one in its place, and I'm stuck with a diesel heater. I didn't want to waste that, so I called SPAR and I said, can I run, how can I run this? What do I need to do? And they said, should I put in a diesel tank? They said, run it off of kerosene and you probably will have one third the maintenance that you would have even if you ran it off of diesel. So that's what I did. Back here is a three gallon tank for um, kerosene and the furnace sets underneath the footrest for the driver. As I mentioned earlier, this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online resource. They have a ton of really interesting courses and, and videos that are designed to be educational and teach you things that maybe you didn't know before. For me, I took a class just recently on their website and it was about storytelling and how it relates to marketing and branding and just a really fascinating course. And it really wasn't that time consuming. It was relatively easy to do and I learned a lot by going through it. And there are tons and tons of classes just like that for photography, film, making, coding, I mean, everything that you could imagine. And it's just a really, really interesting resource. And I have a link, like I said before, in the description to their website. You can follow that link and you'll actually get two free months of a subscription to their service. And as I said earlier, it's only about $10 a month after that. So very affordable. And like I said, just a really awesome resource with a lot, with a lot of great educational videos. Would definitely recommend checking them out, guys. Thank you again, Skillshare, for sponsoring this video. Thanks again, Lex, for letting us check out the van and do a tour video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And you know, everything in that van has a reason for why it is that way. Lex has put a lot of thought into this and, and literally every little detail. And particularly with the cross dowel construction and the way that he designed the walls and the ceiling, he made it so that it's really, really easy to take everything apart. And at one point he said that he had to take it into a Chrysler dealership because he was having a problem with the backup camera. And he brings it in and you know, the mechanic looks at it and he's like, you're gonna have to take this back to Winnebago or whoever did this and have them take it apart so that we can access the backup camera and get it fixed and Lex goes oh no problem he goes out of the parking lot starts unscrewing things next thing you know he comes in and like half the van is empty and there's all this space to be able to work on it and to be able to fix the backup camera so just a really really awesome design overall and even like the paint on the walls you notice that sponge pattern paint he did that for a reason you know it, it deters scratches from getting on it you can't really see the scratches and the scuffs and those do happen in a small van like that they're already 
already happening on my new kitchen that I did a few weeks ago. So just really, really awesome build. I thought that, it, you know, just the attention to detail and the amount of time that he put into designing it and, and doing it all himself. You know, he has a, a woodworking shop and a metal shop in his garage. So he's able to be able to basically build anything that he could possibly need. And just thought it was a really cool van. And if any of you guys are interested, let me know in the comments below, but Lex actually offered to do like a build details video, kind of going into detail about cross dowel construction in particular and how he was able to put everything together in that van. I don't know if that's something you guys would be interested in or not. Like I said, just let me know in the comments and be sure to upvote those comments so I can kind of get an idea of how many folks would be interested in a video like that. But otherwise, I think that pretty much sums it up for this one. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll talk to you all in the next one. Cover it off with a Brillo pad. You don't do that in van life. You clean it immediately. The first thing you do is you take a paper towel, you wipe it down, and you throw the paper towel away. The next thing you do is you take some Windex, you spritz it lightly, which will cut all the grease, take another paper towel, wipe it down, and your dish is done.